some metal ions will color a flame. This is used in flame photometry to measure trace concentrations, usually in water. Many flame photometers are quite simple instruments and they must always be calibrated against standard solutions. The photometer's relatively cool flame is suitable for the excitation of elements from groups 1, 2 and the lanthanides. Air and gas lines are attached to the back of the instrument. In this case, the air is supplied by a small pump. The gas supply passes through a secondary regulator valve before entering the instrument. Here, the valve is painted red. Before making any readings, unlock the air valve and adjust the air pressure to the value recommended in the instrument manual. Then lock the valve. The regulated air and gas supplies enter a nebulizer unit where they are mixed with the sample solution. The air flowing into the nozzle at the front of the unit draws solution up a thin tube and converts it into a mist. This then enters the nebulizer where it mixes with the gas. The nebulized mixture of gas, air and solution is fed to the burner. Excess liquid from the nebulizer passes into a standpipe which stops air and fuel escaping but allows excess liquid to run to waste. Check regularly that the runoff system is functioning correctly. If it is not, the instrument will not give reliable readings. The way in which this automated instrument works is best seen with the protective hood around the burner assembly removed. Switching on the instrument automatically opens valves in the air and gas supplies. And this instrument automatically ignites the fuel-air mixture. The presence of a flame is sensed by a detector and indicated on the front panel. If ever the flame is extinguished during operation, a signal from the detector shuts off the gas supply. When using older instruments without these safety features, take great care to follow the operating instructions exactly since there may be a risk of forming explosive gas-air mixtures. The presence of elements such as the alkali metals colors the flame. This is the color produced by potassium. And this, that of sodium. The light from the flame passes through a window to a photo detector which covers the opening and is normally hidden inside the hood. This instrument is set up to measure calcium, potassium or sodium. Movement of the bar moves different filters in front of the detector. Each of these only lets light of a wavelength specific to the element in question to reach the detector. The rate at which the instrument draws up liquid, the aspiration rate, should be checked using a blank solution, in this case water, at the beginning of a run. This is easily done by drawing the solution from a graduated vessel, a rate of one cubic centimeter in about 10 seconds is satisfactory. If the instrument doesn't aspirate, or aspirates very slowly, the nozzle may need cleaning. This can be done by removing the nozzle, taking off the delivery tube, and passing a fine wire through the nozzle.
Before starting a run, the flame must be set to give the maximum sensitivity for the element that is to be measured. Ensure that the fuel control is well open. Switch on. And when the flame is ignited, aspirate the blank solution, in this case distilled water. Use the blank control to set the meter reading to zero. Then replace the blank solution by a dilute solution of the element to be measured, in this case sodium. Check that the correct filter is in place. Then reduce the flow of fuel until the meter reading is at a maximum. Now aspirate the blank solution again to remove any traces of sodium from the nebulizer. When the meter reading returns to zero, the instrument is ready to be calibrated against standard solutions. A range of standard solutions should have been made up in advance. The concentrations should be chosen so that the likely concentration of the unknown sample lies in the middle of the range. Start with the most concentrated standard solution. When the reading has stabilized, use the coarse and then the fine sensitivity controls to bring the meter reading to the concentration of this standard solution. Once this is done, the settings of the instrument should not be altered until the analysis is completed. Aspirate the blank solution to clean the nebulizer. Then aspirate the next standard solution. Note the meter reading. Remove the standard solution and aspirate the blank solution again. Continue with this procedure until readings have been recorded for all the standard solutions. Now aspirate the blank solution again. Then aspirate the unknown sample. And record the meter reading. Finally, aspirate distilled water for a couple of minutes to thoroughly clean out the nebulizer. Then switch off. For non-automated instruments, carefully follow the shutdown procedure. If the unknown solution contains solids, it is important to filter it otherwise the nebulizer may become blocked. It is vital to select a filter paper that will not absorb the ions that will be measured. If in doubt, seek advice. Thoroughly wash out the sample vessel and the filter to ensure all the soluble sample is transferred to the measuring flask. Then make it up to volume. Plot the calibration readings. This frequently gives a slight curve. That's why calibration is necessary. 
then read off the parts per million value corresponding to the analytical sample. 